Hello guys, it's Teenage DZ Fan, back another video. And this week's Supergirl episode can essentially be split down the middle. One half of the episode was a VR cautionary tale, and the other half was a metaphor for a heartbreakingly underreported epidemic of violence against a vulnerable population. So let's start with the latter story. Nia's roommate Yvette insists that Nia not spend another night crying over that weird little man. And I just found that really funny how she calls him a weird little man. Because, well, he kind of is. That's what Brainy is. He technically isn't really even a man. Because he's kind of like a robot alien hybrid thing. Yeah, that that's... Okay, never mind. Um, but anyway, so... Um, she says... Y Yvette says that she wants to go um, meet her new boyfriend, Angus who she's been chatting with on this new dating app called Upswipes, and they've been talking for three weeks, so she really trusts this guy. And Nia ends up agreeing, but at the club, she has a vision that, that she can't interpret, while Yvette is lured to the alley by a text from Angus. But Angus isn't Angus. It's... The dude looks nothing like he did in the picture, and he attacks her and gives her a message for Dreamer. Um... And he basically says something like, the the world doesn't need a, a transgender superhero. And he's just being mean, basically. And he warns that if Dreamer doesn't stop her superheroics, he'll keep attacking the trans community. So, th this is terrible. It's ugly, awful, and although a National City detective promises to do his best to find the attacker, Nia wants to do this herself and put an end to the man who hurt and humiliated her roommate. But Kara urges her to let the police and Supergirl bring him to justice, of course. Um, and Nia reluctantly agrees to give law enforcement a few hours to make the arrest. But after her, her ordeal, Yvette begins deleting all of her social media account, accounts because she's tired of making herself a target as a trans woman of c color. But Nia urges her not to. Um, and I, I, I googled this to find the exact quote here because th this is like some really powerful stuff here she says they want us to be invisible because of their own fears they want to erase us so we need to shine even brighter and that's some pretty powerful stuff um and this was a great episode because it's dealing with real problems that people have to deal with in society today and just that one quote is probably going to inspire a lot of people. Um, but after she says that, Nia moves forward with her own plans, and she sets up a profile on Upswipes to lure out the attacker. Kara, meanwhile, enlists the help of Brainy, who's watching footage of Dreamer take, taking down a Dominator. And he pushes aside his feelings and agrees to help. Then Kara helps William with his story on Yvette's attack, and they discuss just how often violence against the transgender community is misreported or underreported. Um, and this ends up gi giving her a glimpse at what's driving Nia's quest for justice. And turns out Nia's gambit actually pays off because she arrives at an Upswipes meetup as Dreamer when she where she confronts Yvette's attacker. And he pulls out a big old knife on her and spews all kind of hateful words and stuff because he's just a big bully. Um... And then Dreamer really beats him up. I mean, this was a bad idea for this dude. You come in, like, it's honestly kind of stupid. Like, you have a knife, and you're trying to fight a superhero. So then she ends up getting him lassoed around the neck and is about to choke him to death. Once Supergirl shows up, um, because she was alerted by Brainy about Nia's dating profile. And despite Nia's earlier warning, Supergirl gives her a hope speech. And basically says, like, don't stoop to this man's level. So then she, Alex, Jean, and Brainy will help Nia's, keep Nia's community safe now that they're more aware of the dangers they face. And with that, Dreamer lets Supergirl make the arrest, although not before threatening the man that if he returns to his hate crimes after he's released from prison. Um, but later that night, Kara finds Nia crying on the balcony of Catco where she's overwhelmed and upset at how badly she wanted to murder the attacker. And this also connects to the episode of Batwoman that was on right before this episode, because 
just quick spoiler alert for that. Um, you can go check out my review on that, by the way. Um, but Kate Kane, she murdered someone for the first time. She actually killed someone. She took someone's life. And then that coincides with this episode where Nia almost killed someone and wanted to because she felt the need that it had to be done. But ultimately, she realized that it was wrong. Um, but Nia's also mad that she couldn't interpret her dream just like she couldn't save her mother's life. And she's still heartbroken that the one person who supported and loved her ended their relationship without an explanation. Then Kara apologizes for not considering Nia's lived experiences, but reiterates that not lashing out with violence against the bad guys is what separates them from becoming the bad guys. Also, Brainy worked his mojo and found the attacker's online hate group, which he hands over to the detective on the case. Um, and the sad thing about this is that Brainy says this so emotionally. I wish they would honestly just give us back our old Brainy. Like, please? Like, th this Brainy is just... I, I like seeing evil Brainy, but... And it's a cool idea, because I like Brainiac. Um, and he's kind of similar to Brainiac. Brainiac. But the fact that he's just emotionless, I don't really like that. But the other half of this episode actually starts two months ago when a mean-eyed man watches a happy couple hop into a sled pulled by a white tiger in a North Pole VR setting, then gets stuck inside when the end simulation function glitches. Kelly pulls him out and reports the failsafe glitch. We then jump ahead to today in present time when Al from the Alien Bar asks Jean and Alex for help finding his brother, who checked into a hotel a week ago for a weekend escape experience at Obsidian Platinum's virtual Las Vegas. While Jean searches for Trevor's physical person, Alex puts on the lenses and searches for him virtually with a real-world link to Kelly to help guide her so she doesn't get lost. Um... And in the VR world, Alex is greeted with a bunch of experience options based on her own desires, including one that looks a little like Alex as Supergirl. And there's also one with her cradling a baby. But the Supergirl thing is actually something that we'll, we will see in the next episode where Alex will become Supergirl. So that's exciting. Um... But in this episode, she heads to the old, old school Vegas simulator and quickly find a spooky haunted house on a hill. Um, I don't know why you would want to go to a haunted house in a VR simulation, but eh, whatever. Um, and Kelly explains that this is one of the customized add-ons that Obsidian allows advanced users to create without any regulation or oversight. Um... So this dude sounds like he's pretty messed up because he's the one that created this haunted house and he wants to be there. Um, okay. But Alex walks into the house and finds it set up like the tank where Rick Malvern, Rick Malvern nearly drowned her a couple seasons ago. And Kelly explains that it's designed to tap into the user's worst fears and the failsafe glitch from a few months ago few months ago hasn't been fixed so the two men in the tanks have been tortured for days and this could lead to actual brain damage for alex um so she uses her new hand of the soldier martian tech which isn't really cooperating in the real world um to set them free and they confirm that they're friends of Tre trevor's and he passes through the adjacent wood door with richard uh, who apparently is a new guy in their group. And in the real world, though, Jean locates Richard's wife, and she's the woman who climbed into the sled with Trevor in the North Pole VR, which makes Richard the man who watched in Envy. His wife admits to a VR affair with Trevor, and Jean quickly puts it together that her computer programmer husband, Richard, created a trap for Trevor, basically. A lot, alas, Alex doesn't learn any of that because she loses contact with Kelly once she steps through the door and finds Trevor frozen in fear um, with his whole body lighting up to explode from within before he's reconfigured into painfully explode again over and over that sounds a bit painful 
Like, owie. So, when Richard shows up to watch Trevor's... To watch Trevor suffer, Alex shoots him and sends him rocketing out of the si simulation. And he comes to in his hotel room. Um, and then he gets taken into custody by Jean. But in the VR, Alex talks Trevor into shutting down the next explosion and gets him to tell her what hotel he's checked into so she and Jean can rescue him in the real world. But after everyone's safe and sound, Kelly and Alex reconvene at the alien bar. Kelly confirms that it shouldn't have been possible for Alex to eject Richard from the simulation and, and that the failsafe glitch wasn't corrected after all. Also, virtual romance is technically cheating, also, virtual torture is real attempted murder. So, uh, good to know. And then Trevor shows up to thank Alex in person. So that was nice. Uh, but this storyline wraps up with an unconscious Richard being wheeled away from his hospital room by Margot, the Leviathan lady, um, to be wrapped up like a silver burrito and suspended from the ceiling alongside other silver-wrapped humans. So, uh, that's pretty evil. Um, but what do you want the, with these people leviathan uh and why why are you doing this like i know you're a little psycho cuckoo crazy but i think that's taking it a little far but finally jean and Kern encourages alex to give herself more time with her hand of the soldier tech reminding her that it, it'll instinctively bond with her pulses if she lets it in but as they end their training session Unfortunately, Alex gets a call from her mother and heads straight to Kara's apartment with dreadful news. Because their father, Jeremiah, has been found. Or at least his body, because Jeremiah's dead. Yeah, so this was completely unexpected. Like, didn't see this coming at all. And I imagine this will probably tie, heavily tie into the next episode. Um, I don't know how much, but... I don't think they really needed to do this, but at the same time, like, they didn't, they clearly didn't have any plans to bring the character back on the show at any time, so, I don't know, so Jeremiah's dead now, and like I said, that'll probably tie into next week's episode, because that episode will heavily feature Alex, because she will be going into the VR world, and she will choose that option of becoming Supergirl, and we're going to see Super Alex, basically, um, or Alex as Supergirl. Um, so I think that's going to be really cool. We've seen set photos and leaked photos from that before. So we've known about that for a few weeks. Um, but it's cool to actually be seeing it now in the new episode. So that that will be interesting to see. But what did you guys think about this episode? Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And are you excited to see Super Alex? Because I know I am. So thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next video, so I am still all my DC knowledge upon you.